Hello my friends and thank you for joining me. This is an important video that I've been meaning to do for a long time. So these are all interesting facts that can be useful, certainly useful in Dwarf Fortress. This is going to improve your Dwarf Fortress game, of course, because the game is all about building mines through geological features. Uh, if you're a nerd like me and you also just think geology is really neat, this is going to be an especially good video. So in Dwarf Fortress at least, there are four types of stone layers in Dwarf Fortress, very much based on real-life geology. So yeah, let's give a quick overview. At the top layer we have soil. If you search for an embark, you can specify exactly how much soil you want and it can go from zero soil to like four layers deep and soil is something you really want to think about because so like if there's also an aquifer which is a feature that we're about to talk about as well more layers of soil mean that you can't smooth the stone walls so you can't tamp down an aquifer as easily in a soil biome so i mean just imagine that if you're digging through um loose soil and the water table is right underneath basically where you're standing it's just like at the beach it's going to fill with water immediately and that's different than of course you know digging a stone tunnel that you can then smooth and fortify you can fortify st uh, soil layers as well but that's just something you want to think about soil also plays into how much farming you're going to do like for example if it's all sand i learned the hard way then you'll have no surface farming you can farm on you know normal types of soil a few other things like that uh, moving on, moving on from soil, because honestly, while we're talking about stone layers, that's the least stony of them all. Let's move right on to aquifers, which are also found with this layer. So like I said, it's just kind of a groundwater. So at the very top are volcanoes, which is, of course, where magma from the center of the terrain comes all the way up through a crack, a vertical crack in the earth. So that's the topmost feature. Below that is soil, aquifers. Like I said, that's just your water table. On some maps, that's another thing that you can search for in an embark where you can specifically be like, I would like an aquifer or I would not like an aquifer. For example, I think the footage you're looking at now is from a new aquifer challenge that I'm doing where it's just a huge water table. It's really hard to dig through, but I enjoy it. Hashtag saltwater aquifer. So now that we've established like the basic layout from top to bottom of the kind of layers that you're gonna be working through, I'm gonna jump around to the most interesting features, the things that you're gonna to wanna to dig towards, the things that you're gonna, in a dwarf fortress run, the things that you're gonna to wanna to especially investigate depending on what you're trying to do. So metamorphic contains a small variety of vein ores as well as marble. Now, I've, I don't think I've defined that yet in this video. Vein ores just means like where you'll find a vein of metal you know it's only copper and silver which if you've seen my uh metal ranking chart you'll know that that's not bad it's not bad at all but limited vein ore now the main reason you're going to want to come to the metamorphic layer is because it contains marble which is the only non-sedimentary flux so if you're not already familiar with flux stone it basically all it does is let you get to steel it lets you process iron into steel via pig iron and and then to steel so it is very important for a military build or for anything where you would want steel, mostly for military. That's the main where you really, really, you're going to be mad at yourself if you don't have flux stone. So maybe I should use that to segue. Let's let's circle back. So metamorphic, that's the main thing. It's it's not terribly critical. It has a little bit of ore. It does have marble, which often has a lot of marble in my experience. But if you're looking for other options for flux stone, flux stone, by the way, is also something that you can search for in the embark menu to find an embark. It really is important. If you made it this far in the video and you've been like, I don't know what he's talking about with this embark menu, and how to search for the exact embark I want, please do some research because that is a really critical tool to having the fun that you want to have in Dwarf Fortress because you can specify basically everything. But so usually after the soil, you're going to hit a sedimentary layer. This has lignite and bituminous coal, which are both really useful for fuel if you don't have a volcano. Uh, so if you don't have a volcano for fuel, you're going to have to do charcoal from wood or you're gonna to have to process lignite and bituminous coal within the sedimentary layer. And it doesn't always have that. So, you know, fuel is another consideration that when you're setting your embark that you wanna think about. Uh, so yeah, flux stone, unless you have marble later in the metamorphic layer, you better have had flux stone or have, you know, searched correctly on your embark and, and made sure that there was flux stone. And it also mentions that the gems, if you do find some gems in this layer, they're a little less valuable. We're going to talk about that later. There's there's a few other weird little things that I, I learned from this article, actually, as I was reading. But there's things like jade only appears in um, alluvial layers. And hopefully I'll remember to put that on the screen so people know what I'm talking about. But in any case, 20% of the time you get igneous extrusive instead. And so I was reading this wiki, and this is actually something I didn't realize until I was reading it. It says, besides being made of different rocks, they're generally very similar to sedimentary layers, with the exception being that they often indicate the presence of magma above the magma sea itself. This is always the topmost layer near volcanoes. So that's kind of the trade-off. If you embark on a volcano, you might be in a situation where you have igneous extrusive instead of sedimentary. And that kind of makes sense because, you know, the idea of a volcano is that, like, from the magma, from the magma sea down at the bottom in the center of the planet is 
pushing up. And so the uh, igneous intrusive, which is normally the layer right over the magma sea, is pushed up to the surface. So it makes sense. But so, yeah, you will not find flux stone because almost all the flux stone, except for marble, occurs in that sedimentary layer you're not getting now if you if you embark near a volcano. But hopefully you can find marble in the metamorphic. Hopefully the map will make it up to you. But once again, got to recommend you search for this beforehand. If you really want to make sure that you have anything, a certain sand layer, savagery, anything, you really got to learn how to use that embark tool. Anyway, moving on. Uh, people who already know how to use that tool are like, move on. <laughs> okay, and so caverns start around, they can at least in my experience, they can occur at any layer. Uh, the image that is now on my thumbnail, and I'm going to try to post up again here, is um, shows it as occurring kind of slightly after the metamorphic layer. Leave in the comments if that's really the rule, because I feel like I found caverns right on the surface sometimes. Maybe it's just a weird, maybe it is a metamorphic layer. I feel like caverns are, are kind of in most layers. It's true that I've never, of course, found one in soil, and I've never found one in sedimentary. I'm not sure. Anyway, leave it in the comments. Uh, I'll have to do more research on my own. But then after the caverns, which we've, I've done other videos about those, of course, that's a whole that's a whole series of videos. And your metamorphic and your igneous intrusive are going to be the really, really rare gemstones, which dwarven, dwarven economy is all about. I'll be honest, I've played Dwarf Fortress for about a decade now, and I still don't have a clear understanding of which gems are in the metamorphic section and which gems are in the um, igneous intrusive. Honestly, I just, I'm happy every time I find a gem. I just dig them. I, whatever I find, I keeps. So, uh, but with that being said, I did learn a lot from this wiki page, which is mentioning, so um, here are the varieties that the game classifies different gems as, and these are useful for a lot of things, for how you would use them, how valuable they are. So, of course, the lowest rarity is synthetic, which is the different types of glass. I made a different video about how to make green glass, clear glass, and crystal glass. Uh, you can check that out on my channel. Uh, but those are synthetic gems. They barely count, basically. They can be used as replacement for gems, but it's like, you know, it's like a piece of piece of plastic instead of a gem. Something interesting about jade that I did want to mention is that it apparently is only found in alluvial zones. And I, I hope I put this up on the screen again. Alluvial. It's a rare word that I didn't know, but it means... Uh, it's a special biome. Several minerals, ores, and gems are specified to occur at least in part within alluvial layers. Uh, jade is a giveaway, that's what the wikia says. Alluvial stone is loose and unconsolidated stone that has been eroded away, smoothed down by water flow, and then redeposited in a non-marine setting. Cases where like a lake existed and then it dried up, or a river existed and then it dried up. So anyway, that's jade. If you find jade, which I have in the past, that's there's a lot of little hints like that where a gem will actually give you a lot of information about what you're digging through, if you have this, you know, this knowledge of what it means. So sorting by value, ornamental, these examples are like bloodstone, blue jade, citrine, uh, lapis lazuli, which we know from Minecraft, of course, uh, shorals, smoky quartz. Uh, these are all ornamental. That's the lowest level. Actually mixed in with synthetic, which can jockey for low value position with ornamental. So, you know, just like at home, you know, stuff is made out of glass or made out of something relatively cheap, but pretty to look at. After that is semi-precious, with examples of semi-precious being like opals, zircons, spinels, topaz, black opal, blue garnet, stuff like that. Then precious are emeralds, faint yellow diamonds, rubies, sapphires, with rare being special colors of diamonds, black diamond, blue diamond, clear diamond. And also in there are star rubies and star sapphires, which are specifically especially nice rubies and sapphires that you find that can be cabiconed for additional value, I think. I'm not sure if it actually does add additional value. Leave it in the comments if that's wrong. I'm just doing my best reading the wikia here, again, in the deep, deep depths of the Dwarf Fortress lore mine. Okay, but I know what most people are here for. You want a cheat sheet of the four main stone layers. Where do you go for what? And I'm going to try and spell that out right now. So... When I say main stone layers, I mean, we're not counting soil, we're just counting sedimentary or the igneous extrusive layer, depending on your map, and then below that metamorphic, and then below that, the igneous intrusive layer. Simple as. So these are these are the only four you have to worry about, and it sounds like based on the wikia, um, basically, you only have to worry about three at a time. So let's just start from the top. So sedimentary, that's most maps the top layer under your soil. What are we looking for? Uh, sandstone, mudstone, shale, these are all kind of, uh, you know, regular rock salt, lime. Limestone is specifically used in parchment, so look out for limestone, because it can do some specific things. I think dolomite is like magma safe. This is another thing that we might look for, might save. Otherwise, the things that you're dredging up from here can basically just be used for buildings or other unremarkable things. So let's talk stone found in the sedimentary layers. 
Hematite, really important source of iron. Limonite is also an ore of iron. Does it produce anything else? Oh, it's pure, okay, great, I learned that today. Limonite is pure iron as well. So sedimentary layer, you're looking for iron, which is one of the best uh, metals that you can have for general purposes. We mentioned earlier bituminous coal and lignite are both important sources of fuel. They can be processed. Gypsum has some economic purpose that I don't remember, but it um, is not usually worth saving. I'll usually toss most of that. Saltpeter also, if you're interested, magnetite, which is also a source of iron. So basically sedimentary layer, you're going to find your iron one way or another. Gems that we're looking out for are onyx, shoral, agate, sards, more agate, lots of agate, lots of jasper, tiger's eyes, tourmalines. That's the other big one. Tourmalines in the sedimentary level. Fairly common, but can provide some early money as you're beginning to start your fortress. Okay, so let's say that you've started on a volcano or something. Or for whatever reason, you have an igneous extrusive layer, which, as we said, that's when basically the, the magma sea bubbles up to the surface, providing some igneous rock closer to the surface than you would normally expect. Okay, so you'll know you're in a sedimentary layer if your dwarves are digging through sandstone, siltstone, mudstone, shale, claystone, rock salt, limestone, conglomerate, dolomite, chert, or chalk. If any of these sound familiar, you're probably in your sedimentary layer. So now let's talk igneous extrusive. Igneous extrusive, you'll know you're in that layer if you see rhyolite, basalt, andesite, dacite, or obsidian. Those more experienced players would also recognize these. These tend to occur near the magma sea as well. I've also seen them on like beachside oceans. I don't know. I think on my maps, I've noticed that a lot of times volcanoes will come out, out of the ocean. And so it's, yeah, it's a combination of there being nothing else, you know, water washes away the soil and the sedimentary level, but the igneous extrusive layer. So uh, the footage you're looking at now, I believe, is from a volcano beachside embark, and you're going to see lots of basalt and andesite uh, that we're digging through and obsidian as well. You'll know you're there when you hear those words, basalt or andesite or dacite or obsidian or rhyolite. Uh, here we're also looking for hematite, now also copper as native copper. Galena, which is a silver lead mix, uh, more magnetite, more iron. Also native aluminum, which so from this footage that I'm going to be showing, we do have some native aluminum, which is nice. That's a little thing about forming around a volcano. Also native gold. Uh, gems, we're looking for turquoises and zircons. Many, many zircons. It's like zircon city in intrusive and extrusive igneous layers. So moving on to the metamorphic layer, as we've discussed the main thing about it is you're going to look out for marble as a flux stone if you don't have a sedimentary layer, if you're near a volcano or something. <clears throat> Up beyond that, uh, there are a few unique types of gems, not so good for metal ore, uh, and the Wikia notes lacking any ores of iron. So if you don't have iron already, by the time you get into the metamorphic ore, then you need to ask yourself some questions. How do you know you're in the metamorphic layer? You're going to be looking for the main rock that you're cutting through is going to be quartzite, slate, Phyllite, schist, gneiss, or marble. Marble being the really economically valuable one. Ores? Okay, interesting. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to make a complaint to the Wikia because it says at the top, metamorphic layer. However, they are generally poor in metal ores, lacking any ores of iron. But then when I scroll down to stone found in metamorphic layers, it notes small clusters of hematite. I, I think I get it. I think the idea being that occasionally hematite will be on the layer of a metamorphic layer. That's an iron ore, of course, but it, you can't count on it. You won't find it normally in metamorphic layers. No no beef, Wikia. I love you, Dwarf Fortress, Wikia. Uh, you'll also find galena, sphalerite. These are ores, magnetite. This also mentioned the magnetite small clusters. So, you know, that thing earlier about lacking any iron ores, maybe worth editing. And then for gems, so metamorphic, we're getting, when you're in the metamorphic, you're down towards the bottom of the map. So you're getting ready for some end game fun, some circus, and you're really just kind of mostly have the metals you need. You're collecting gems to sell, specialize, and support your economy. But so gems you'd find down here are more valuable. You know, they're harder to get to. That's the dwarf specialty. They go down deep. They get the rare ones. So while you're down there, you're looking for shorals, tourmalines, moonstones, more zircons. Like we mentioned, zircons also occur higher. Tourmalines, garnets, even more zircons. I'm just looking down the list. More tourmalines, spinels as well at this layer. Garnets, that's, that's about it. But um, lots of good stuff to cut and to sell to foolish, elven, and human traders who have no idea how easy it is to pluck this stuff out of the earth. And then the only thing left is the igneous intrusive layer, which is basically the stone that sits right on top of the magma sea. So at this point, things are getting hot. We're watching out for magma. The magma sea could be all around us. Um, there's probably scary stuff even beyond the magma sea, if you can even imagine something as scary as that. But so this is where the earth, the planet is starting to resist us a little bit. Uh, but it is valuable down there. 
So how do you how are you going to know you're in an igneous intrusive layer? Well, you should be pretty deep down, of course, but then you're going to be cutting through granite or diorite or gabbro. These are the main stones down deep. Down here, you're going to find more hematite, magnetite, some gold. Lapis lazuli forms very deep down, as we know from Minecraft. What is the deal? It's like a real thing. And all video games have agreed that it occurs very, very deep under the earth. I guess it's true. But don't quote me on that. I have no idea. The key thing here is that kimberlite. Kimberlite, you're going to want to remember that name. It's in the game. It's kind of a blue-gray stone. It's an igneous stone, and it's found in veins in layer of gabbro, which as we mentioned in the previous one, so down deep in the igneous um, intrusion layer, down deep towards the magma sea, you're going to see something called kimberlite inside of big chunks of gabbro. And when you see that, you want to get really excited because gabbro is the only, I'm sorry, kimberlite is the only source of the rarest gems in the game including yellow diamonds, black diamonds, red, blue, green, and clear diamonds. Um, these occur only, I'm quoting the, quoting the wikia now, they occur only as individual gems within existing clusters of faint yellow diamonds, which are themselves found only in kimberlite, which is itself found only in gabbro. So that's why you want to go down there. Is some sweet, some serious diamond action it starts to happen really close to the magma sea. You know, experiment down, down there, you know, just dig through stuff while you're down there. Um, it will only result in fun while you're down there. So enjoy. I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about, about dwarven geology in uh, Dwarf Fortress. So thank you for, again for joining me. And if you made it this far, uh, thank you so much for listening. Just like to remind everybody that liking this video and subscribing if you're not already really helps the channel. And yeah, I hope, I hope people enjoy.